Hello everyone, welcome to this research presentation on after-death communication with cell phones by Dora Raga and Imant Barush. Before we begin, I would like to go over today's agenda. I will first introduce our pilot study and define a few terms. I will then um, go over the characteristics of our participants, study methods, a few quotes by respondents detailing their after-death communication experiences, and finally, we will discuss the results by analyzing the data and findings of our study. So after death communication is defined as the apparent communication with the deceased. It can occur through different ways, one of which is via electronic devices. When after death communication occurs on cell phones, there is an apparent sender and a receiver. The sender is assumed to be a non-physical entity communicating with the, the receiver through a device. And a receiver is a person who is receiving the communication from the sender. This communication can occur in the form of a text message, phone calls, as well as um, other ways which will be further discussed in the presentation. And finally, ITC, which stands for Instrumental Transcommunication, is defined as the ostensible communication with the deceased using electronic devices. And on this slide, I provided two relevant books discussing these phenomena. So on the left is the book Phone Calls by, uh, from the Dead by Scott Rogo and Raymond Bayliss. And on the right is a study by Evelyn Ilsacer on after-death communication. So to begin with, after-death communication with cell phones can be a spontaneous or a deliberate form of instrumental transcommunication. Our exploratory study was aimed to identify the relevant parameters of after-death communication with cell phones with a focus on individuals and their behavioral person and personality characteristics rather than the devices used for communication with the deceased. And the end goal of our study is to understand how the communication with the deceased occurs so that it can possibly be regularized for widespread use. And now moving on to our study participants. Our questionnaire was first sent out to the ITC Collective Group on Facebook on July 10th, 2020. We received responses from 21 individuals from both the Facebook group and our own connections. And here you can see the breakdown of gender and education levels of our participants. Um, most of them were women and they were highly educated. And here we see the religious affiliations and um, frequency of religious practice. As we can see, many of them have their own beliefs and practice their religion on a daily basis. Our pilot study also included three different measures, which were the demographics uh, measures, the after-death communication questionnaire, and the post measures. And it was created using Qualtrics on Western University server. The first measure was the demographics questionnaire. And the after death communication questionnaire came after the demographic section and included 41 Likert type items varying from strongly disagree to strongly agree regarding the nature of after death communication with cell phone devices, along with the impact of these instances on individuals and their perception of the sender and experiences as a whole. The psychological me measures, on the other hand, consist of the 42 item Carol Riff Scales of Psychological Wellbeing questionnaire. It was used as a measure of the participant's psychological well-being by evaluating the six different areas of well-being measured by the Riff inventory, which are autonomy, environmental mastery, personal growth, positive relations with others, purpose in life, and self-acceptance. And now let's just discuss the results of the pilot study. The final results show that our participants scored higher on the personal growth scale of the RIF inventory than the norm. 
This is a statistically significant finding suggesting that our participants have a greater interest in self-development and openness to new experiences. It is also important to note that our participants did not deviate from the norm for other skills, which suggests that their psychological well-being is not any different than the average person. It was also found that there are many kinds of after-death communication mechanisms, and the most frequent ones were telephone calls, photos or videos showing during telephone calls or on voicemail, and voice during telephone calls. And based upon the responses that we collected, we created a hier hierarchical cluster analysis, which produced a solution with nine clusters. From these nine clusters, we will provide and discuss the, the five most significant ones. The first scale, which is uh, comprehensive communication, consisted of nine items. This scale shows that the communication from the sender was clear and meaningful to the receiver. Please pay attention to the average scores on these scales, as that will be helpful later on. The second scale, titled active sender, consisted of three items. This scale shows that the sender appeared to be actively involved in the communication, such that the receiver felt their presence during the interaction and was able to recognize the entity as an individual they had a connection with prior to their death. Scale number three is meaningful communication, and it consists of six items. This scale tells us about how the communication appeared to be meaningful in the eyes of the receiver and that the overall experience was positive and impactful. The fourth scale, which is scale number six, is spiritual impact and it has six items. This scale tells us that the interaction changed the receiver's lives and increased their spirituality, despite the, the participants being unfamiliar with these types of experiences. And finally, the last scale is the other devices scale, indicating that the respondents have received messages from the deceased on other devices. This table shows a correlation between the five different scales, and we can see that the comprehensive communication scale and the meaningful communication scale have the strongest correlation out of all of the other ones. And now on to some quotes from our participants that we took from their answers to question nine, where they were asked to describe the most significant instance of after-death communication on cell phones that they experienced in the past. You will notice the scores of the participants, and in each case, I have indicated whether they are higher or lower um, than the average with plus and minus signs. One of our participants explained that, the, that he had been in frequent computer communication with his deceased wife for three and a half years, and I will just let you read what he had to say. And this is participant number 11's experience. And here we have a quote from participant number 11, I mean 14, sorry. I will also let you read what participant seven had to say. And this quote was from an artist whose father passed away, who later on experienced after-death communication on her cell phone. The fifth participant detailed a time where her deceased son was controlling multiple electronic devices. And participant number eight shared a friend's story with us.
Participant number nine told us a story about an experience of hers, which I will just let you read first. She also said that later on in the evening, her sister had asked her to go somewhere, and it was at this place that she ran into Glenn's widow and his daughter. She then realized that Glenn knew she would see his family, and so she delivered the message. And this is participant number 10's quote. And finally, we have participant number 20's after-death communication experience. And now moving on to the conclusion. So all in all, it can be seen through our results that the participants scored highest on the meaningful communication scale and, sc and scored high on the spiritual impact and active sender scales. This means that the interaction had a strong spiritual impact on the receiver and that the sender was actively involved in the communication. It can also be inferred that participants were either more open or became more uh, open to self-development than norms as a result of their after-death communication experience. As for the next steps in after-death communication with cell phones research, we plan on obtaining information about the cell phones and psychological conditions under which the after-death communication phenomena occurs. And thank you so much for tuning in.